Let's pray for him. Okay? Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We are live again this morning. It's uh, 7 o'clock on a Wednesday morning. Today is September 20th already. Okay. Today, the gospel we're going to read today, the gospel we're going to read today is related to one of the commandments. Okay? So, I want you to be able to guess, okay, later what commandment we are dealing with today. Okay? I'm going to comment on the commandment today. Okay. The gospel comes from St. John, oh sorry, St. Luke, chapter 7, 31 to 35. Jesus said to the crowds, to what shall I compare the people of this generation? What are they like? They are like children who sit in the marketplace and call to one another. We played the flute for you, but you didn't dance. We sang the dirge, but you didn't weep. For John the Baptist came neither eating nor drinking wine, and you said, He is possessed by a demon. The Son of Man... Jesus, right, came eating and drinking, and you said, Oh, look, he is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is vindicated by all her children. So here's a, here's a situation where our Lord is commenting about the way people uh, were regarding him okay, and comparing him with John the Baptist. Okay? Um, and uh, saying, oh, John the Baptist was this and that, um, you know, and you said this of him. And now that I'm here, you say uh, the same thing of me. <laughs> See? So, anyway, damn if you do, damn if you don't, right? <laughs> so, um, what is our Lord um, trying to demonstrate here to us? Okay. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll go to that. But the way I want to start... Um, and for us understanding this uh, gospel for today and the commandment we're going to talk about is this. I'm going, let's, let's try to uh, understand it this way. I am a Kleochko, right? You are all Kleochkos, right? You bear the name of Kleochko, okay? And I'm proud to say I am a proud Kleochko. I am proud to be carrying the name Kleochko, right? Why? Well, because I come from an illustrious line of ancestors. Right? My grandfather, your great-grandpa, Aaron, was a hero, was a hero of two world wars and a multi-decorated hero. Right? We just came from Memorial Day celebrations in North Carolina on May 29. And you witnessed how the, the, the U.S. military uh, awarded him his uh, posthumous medals, including the Purple Heart. Your own grandpa, Jacob, the same thing. He lived in a very illustrious professional and, um, and uh, a professional life and, uh, and uh, an illustrious service uh, to the public when he was in politics. Okay? He, he too is, is a multi-awarded uh, professional and politician. Okay? So it is, um, it is uh, with pride and honor that, that I uh, carry that name. Kleochko. And, and I would like to encourage you, right, to also have that same pride in your own uh, lineage. Okay? You are all Kleochkos, and, and it's, it is our obligation, to say the least, it is our obligation to preserve that good name. And, and, and never, never in the least tarnish that name by our own wrongdoing, by our own bad behavior. Okay? <clears throat> So we always have to protect that name. Now, God. God is our Father. We are children of God. Okay? And what does God stand for? Who is God? God is the okay. creator of heaven and earth and of all things. Okay, God is the okay, creator of heaven and earth and of all things. Yes, that's true. Right? But there is, there, there is one other reputation that God stands for. And that, and that embodies uh, the, 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 uh, the whole essence of God. And what is that? 
God is truth. Okay? God is all about truth. God is the embodiment of truth. God is, is all truth, is all good. Now, and God is our Father, right? So if we are God's children, we should also be the embodiment of truth. We should also be carriers of truth. We should also be purveyors of truth. We should also always speak the truth. Right? Now, but we are not the only children of God, right? Other people are also children of God. Therefore, they too are bearers of the truth. They too carry within themselves that characteristic, that trademark of being children of the truth. Right? Now, what does that, what does that uh, mean for us? It means that, that if we are really children of God, the least we can do is to always speak the truth and never tarnish, never tarnish the truth that belongs not only to ourselves, but on other people as well. Okay? And here is why, here is why God had to give us a commandment to make sure that we respect, uphold, and promote the truth about others all the time. What is that commandment among the Ten Commandments? What is that commandment that tells us about Truth and speaking truth of others. Uh, what? Anybody? The Eighth Commandment. <laughs> you have to make a chorus. The Eighth Commandment. Very good. What does the Eighth Commandment say? Okay, very good. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Okay? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And that is what this gospel is all about today. Because uh, our Lord says, well, uh, you, you, you say all sorts of things about me, right? Which are not true, of course. You said the same thing about John the Baptist, which are not true, of course. Well, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that. Wisdom is vindicated by all her children. In other words, the truth about, about people is what vindicates them. And we are all children of God, right? Children of God. That is our lineage. That is our uh, trademark. That is our name. Our name is that of uh, uh, being children of God. And so let's review. Let us review the Eighth Commandment and what the Eighth Commandment uh, teaches us. Okay? So, and as always, well, we turn to the Catechism for us to understand the Eighth Commandment. Thou shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Folks, this is on uh, part 3, section 2, chapter 2, article 8. Okay? The Eighth Commandment in the Catechism. The Eighth Commandment forbids, forbids what? Misrepresenting the truth. And if, for, if it forbids misrepresenting the truth, then the opposite is true, right? It makes us promote the truth about others. This moral prescription flows from the vocation of the holy people to bear witness to their God who is the truth and wills the truth. See, so as I was saying earlier, right? Our behavior bears witness to who we are. We are children of God. God is all truth. And if we always speak the truth, and we don't misrepresent the truth, who is God, then we are living up to what the Eighth Commandment is telling us. Man tends by nature towards the truth. You know what that means? Man tends by nature. In other words, it is the most natural thing for us to do, to tell the truth. See? So telling a lie, maligning the reputation of other people, eh, is unnatural for man. 
it is unbecoming of a human being, to say the least. To say the least, it is unbecoming of a human being, of a person, to tell a lie. Okay? To tell a lie and to, to malign other people, to destroy the reputation of other people. It is unbecoming. It is like saying, it is like saying that to be a Kleachko, okay, or, 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 or to be a dishonorable person is not becoming of a Kleachko, right? It is like saying that uh, to be disloyal to your country is not becoming of a Kleachko, right? Because your grandfather was a hero of your country, right? It is like saying that to be a sloppy worker is not becoming of a Kleachko because your grandpa, and by the way, your papa, okay, were authors of books related to making work values work, right? And 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 making and teaching people about how to work properly and how to work well with excellence. So for a Kliachko to be a sloppy worker, it's unbecoming of the name, right? So same thing is true with all of us as human beings. It is unnatural, unbecoming for us to be telling lies. It is not in keeping with our human nature, as the Catechism teaches us. He is obliged to honor and bear witness to it. It is in accordance with their dignity that all men, because they are persons, see, it belongs to our nature as persons, are both impelled by their nature and bound by a moral obligation to seek the truth especially religious truth. Okay? Right here in the Catechism. So truth as uprightness in human action and speech is called truthfulness, sincerity, or candor. Truth or truthfulness is the virtue which consists in showing oneself true in words, and guarding uh, in deeds and in truthful words, and in guarding against duplicity, dissimulation, and hypocrisy. Okay. So, um, folks, the, the, the Catechism continues on with more things about the Eighth Commandment, but those are the most basic things that we have to understand today, that we can cover. And as you see, uh, as the Catechism itself tells us, right, truthfulness is the most appropriate thing for us as human beings. It is what belongs to our nature as men. And, and that, is, that is very much in keeping with the way we started talking about this commandment. It is because we are children of God. So we are inheritors of that truth. Right? We, are, we are made in the image and likeness of God. So if God is all true, right? if God is truth himself, then we too, we too should be, uh, uh, should be bearers of that truth, which is very much part of our human nature. Now, if you read through the Catechism, uh, it will tell you what are the sins against uh, the Eighth Commandment. What are the things against the Eighth Commandment? And just to read a rundown of it, number one is false witness or perjury, right? which is the way the Eighth Commandment is worded, right? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, right? Number two, rash judgments, detraction, calumny. And guess what? Part of the Eighth Commandment, boasting. Okay? When you make boasts that are not true and not real, right? Uh, and of course, lying. Okay? Lying consists in uh, speaking falsehood with the intention of deceiving. See? That is what a lie is. Okay, so those are the sins against the Eighth Commandment. So folks, what do we do as far as uh, Catholic best practices are concerned? How do we live up to the Eighth Commandment? You see, there, it's not always easy. There are so many things that other people do wrong, right? And we have the temptation of being judgmental and critical about them. Right? And we can sometimes uh, speak all sorts of stuff, all sorts of things against people 
when, when uh, we see the wrongdoings. Well, our Lord has a, has a prescription, and that is fraternal correction. Right? You see, it doesn't mean to say we just keep quiet when other people do wrong. Right? And correcting them is not the same as speaking ill of them. Okay? Correcting them for their mistakes is not the same as speaking badly. Uh, to speak badly and to speak ill means to, uh, to malign the reputation without any due basis. But if our intention is to correct what is wrong, then we can do that through fraternal correction. And it's in the gospel also, you know, how to do fraternal correction. We'll review that some other time. But what, uh, what I could recommend we do as part of uh, best practices would be, number one, if we have to correct others at all, let us do it with charity. Let us do it with love. Not because we are critical, not because we are judgmental, not just because we feel superior, not just because we think others are just rotten and to the core or whatever it is. No? It has to be always a consequence of charity, a consequence of a real, sincere, and genuine desire to wish them well, to wish what is good for them. That's what charity is all about. And part of that charity is to pray for these people. Okay? When we see other people doing wrong things, when we see that they, they need uh, to change what needs to be changed, uh, correct their behavior, etc., let us pray for them. Because these people will not be able to change just on their own accord. It is tough. It is tough. They need the grace of God to change. They need the grace, uh, the, the extra push that comes from the grace that God can give them. Okay? And that is also part of charity for us to pray for other people. And when we pray for them, guess what? When we pray for them, we are showing love. And we are also, uh, uh, when we pray for them, you know what? One other effect of that is it helps us examine our own conscience. It helps us look into ourselves and see, well, how am I myself performing in that regard? In that matter that I see in my brother, in my sister, how am I doing myself? See? Remember the other saying, before you remove the plank in your own, I mean, sorry, before you attempt to even remove the splinter in your brother's eye, okay? remove the plank in your own eye, right? So, and... and and praying for others when we notice what's wrong with them helps us also examine ourselves and maybe remove that plank in our eye. Right? Okay, then the second recommendation, or make it the third now, is if you cannot praise, say nothing. See? It is better to shut up if we cannot praise people. Sometimes there are situations like that too, that you just have to make something slide. Because at that moment, at that precise moment, it might not be the right time or the right opportunity to correct somebody. You make it slide. And you wait for a better chance. You wait for a better opportunity. You pray a little bit more for that person and then wait for a better chance to be able to correct him. Okay? So uh, <clears throat> that is the way that we can live the Eighth Commandment properly. Okay, and as we conclude, folks... I would just like to invite everybody. Let's say a little prayer for the victims of uh, the earthquake in Mexico and uh, still for the victims of the uh, hurricanes um, in uh, Florida and some other parts. Uh, I understand some uh, islands of the Caribbean are also uh, in trouble now with some uh, hurricanes affecting them. Let's pray for all of the people affected by this. And some of them are our own friends. Um, and so let's keep them in mind and keep in mind the people in Mexico also. And I'd like to, as a special mention, help me pray for a good, good friend of mine, Luis Cuervo, who just passed away. Um, I just got the sad news this morning before beginning this broadcast that Louis uh, passed away. Louis uh, was a childhood friend. Uh, and this is the, uh, he has been fighting uh, cancer and um, you know, he had died as a consequence of that. So let's pray for his soul too. Thank you very much, everybody. We're off to Mass. See you next time. Bye-bye.